you set the thing back and um, figure out what's going on. Yeah. 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 He thought it was a misalignment between the transmission computer and the pump computer. The transmission is what drives the pump. And somehow they're not talking to one another just right. Kick the tires on before we sign off on accept delivery. I told Amy today, I said, I think I signed that offer. I don't know this thing will operate the way. Well, the one you just had me have in the Look at the back, front back, my front back. Well, I only got one with two on it. <laughs> so did I give you another one? You only got two pages in here, I think. Missing one. Front, front, back, front. You got another one? I do. A uh, middle one? Mine's front and back, so. Man, I, I, I did these at work before and it didn't suck it back in there and print the other side of it. I might have grabbed it out too quick. <laughs> Well, I've got six o'clock. Y'all ready to get started? Bring the meeting of the building and the codes and zoning committee to order. Um, Mr. Oliver, can you call the roll, or do you have? Uh, I have. I think I have the roll. Let me try, let me try and see if I got it. Uh, Dwight Jewell here. Uh, Randy Gullen here. Uh, Ken Buckmaster here. Steve Whitaker here. John Oliver yo. Grace Thomas, Corey Deacon, Amber Russell. Not here. Is that good? So, how many we got? Five uh, uh, Yeah. Uh, Sam, you said a regular member? Yes. Okay, Sam Edwards. Here. And the mayor. And, well, yeah, and the mayor, of course. Um, well, between the mayor and Sam, that way we're way over, yeah. I don't know what you got five, yeah. Okay. Uh, we could not find copies of the minutes to uh, Mr. Oliver is going to read those for us to approve and we'll get copies out to everybody. Okay. I, I couldn't find them and neither could I. Yeah, I thought I'd mail them to him, but some of them, anyway. Okay, uh, we met uh, September 24th, uh, 2019 at the courthouse at 7 o'clock. The minutes of the previous meeting were read and approved. There was no old business and a new business. Jenny Hunter and Shante Bilbrey with the Senior Citizen Center addressed the group concerning responsibility for the facility when they are both gone, but there are people in the building taking part in the Meals on Wheels program. While they are rarely gone, occasionally they are both involved in taking seniors to events, etc., at which time they lock the front entrance. If the Meals program is feeding people, the director, Deanna Winter, will be responsible for watching the building people and then locking up when she leaves. However, sometimes she has left the facility to deliver meals herself and left the building unattended. Hunter and Bilbrey were concerned that if that happens and the participant in the meals program were to be injured, who would bear the responsibility? After the discussion, the mayor said he would check on liability in such a situation. But the committee suggested that Hunter and Winter seek responsible volunteers to take responsibility and both have to leave the building at the same time. These volunteers would have to be vetted by the county, etc. We will bring this back up at our next meeting. Under new other new business, Property owners Dwight Hoffman and Eric Wallace asked the county if they could purchase an old county road behind their building on Church Street. The short gravel lane is known as Littleton Street and is generally not used by anyone. Hoffman and Wallace have been asked to remove several old cars they have parked on city streets and beside their building. They would move their vehicles to this abandoned street to remove them from public view and even said they would build a fence to further hide them until they can either restore the old cars or sell them. Their neighbor, Mr. Herbst, was interested in the short length of road behind his lot. After discussion, 
he was decided that selling the property would involve a public auction and we could not conduct a private sale. There were also restrictions on selling bits of land less than a certain size. It was suggested that the mayor instead approach both property owners about leasing the street from the county. Since the street is of no use to the city or county, this way they could still utilize it to hide their vehicles and if they built a fence, they would be expected to take it down if they decided to terminate the lease. This could be an annual lease of nominal cost. A motion by John Oliver to have the mayor speak to both parties about leasing the street property, aware that they make improvements such as a fence that is their financial undertaking. Uh, second by Corey Dickey Patch. John Oliver addressed the other members about moving the county museum and the county election offices to the courthouse. He has met with Steve Paxton, administrator of elections, about such a move. He and the mayor will be meeting with a man from GNRC concerning, a mu concerning museums next week. The historical society is anxious to start off moving the museum from the old depot <coughs> in advance of our county's 150th anniversary. And then no action was taken on that except that Amber Russell told the group that changes to the handicapped entrance would have to be made for the election commission to move. John will meet with Mr. Paxton and give a list of changes he will need to have the building, etc. All of will work with Paxton to have him choose which old county office is best for the election commission. Mr. Buckmaster suggested that before we move anyone into the building, they make several much needed repairs. The committee agreed and we do have a list of improvements from energy efficient windows to paint. The mayor updated the committee on progress with their codes on derelict and unkempt properties. Sam Edwards will be taking someone to court on October 24th. Mr. Jewell addressed the group about suggestions on lot size and areas of the county that are designated as A1. Currently, lots have to be a minimum of three acres in size, while neighboring counties have a one acre minimum. The county executive committee has suggested that we change to a one or two acre size restriction. You would have to go through the building and coal committee and then from us to the planning commission and then to the county commission for final approval. And no action was taken at this meeting, meeting adjourned. Do you have any questions to the minutes? Do you feel comfortable approving them verbally or do you want to wait until we have another meeting? I'd entertain a motion to approve them. No, you don't need a motion. If there are no changes, they're automatically... Uh, no changes? Everybody good? No changes, they're automatically approved or read. We will. Minutes will stand that's approved. That's right. And we will get printed copies for you. <clears throat> Under old business tonight, we have uh, an update on the Senior Citizens Building Concerns that we had last meeting from Director Hunter, Mayor Chambers. I was going to yeah. check out some things for that and uh, give us what's going on. Well, I spoke, spoke to Mr. Beller. He gave two options to address the issue. The first would be to pass a policy that would require that anyone using the space other than the senior citizen staff, center staff, keep a, a supervisor on site at all times. The other suggestion he gave is that the, the senior citizen center director could be given the authority to appoint a volunteer to serve when the center staff is not on site. I took that to the senior citizen center board and they voted to go with option number one, which would be pass a policy for anyone to, that's using the site, any organization that's using the site, to have a supervisor on site at all times. And asked me to bring that back to the county commission, uh, to the county buildings committee. So that's kind of where that stands, uh, Mr. Chairman. Well, does this policy need to be from their board or from our committee or from the full commission? They would like for this committee to approve what they would like. I mean, the going with the Midcomer and Human Resources and anyone else using the center have to have someone on site at all times. They think that might give it a little bit more, I guess, enforcement or do we, authority. Do they need to have any kind of qualifications or can it be anybody just designated in there? Uh, it would just be whatever that organization as far as I know like Midcommon, whoever it is there whatever the supervisor is on site at the time if they leave there would have to be another supervisor on site but not just somebody that they tap out and say you watch the center no I'm they sure. specifically said a supervisor okay. <clears throat> can, I have, can I have copies of both of those for the I was 
talking about it off the top of my head. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's the will of the body? Any questions? Let's talk about it. So they're just asking us to give them our recommendation for that being the case, or for, to give them our approval for that being written in. Is that what I gathered there? Yeah, just the, if the committee would like to just go ahead and, I guess, approve what they're wanting to do. There was some confusion on my part as I didn't know if, unlike the, the, unlike the community center, which I know this body has passed uh, policy and whatnot for that as far as renting it and all that kind of stuff, I'm not so sure there is anything for the, the senior citizen center, but they would like for you to at least vote to, I guess, approve the changes they want or what policy they'd like to adopt. I think, I think in the past is that Shante and, uh, and Jenny would leave, and then the Mills and Wills people would still be there. And she and she has she feeds public, you know, so she had a dozen people there. And then she's had to go out because a driver didn't show up, and she did not appoint anyone in charge. All she has to do is turn around and say, "Well, I'm gone." Someone has to be in charge. And she just hadn't done it. It's just a matter of. I thought what was the decision was that was not the case that we would have a. A supervisor. supervisor. Yeah. So what she's going to do? She's going to say, "You are supervisor. I'm gone right now." Not unless that person works for that. That was that was not how they. I would not. They, 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 they intended it to be somebody with that organization that actually has a title of supervisor, supervisor. not well, leave and just designate someone to do it. Because then you get in the situation that you know, if they may not have training to deal with any issues that come up, whereas the supervisor. Should have that training, so that that's they really wanted somebody that actually is the designation of supervisor. My concern is so many times in the past we've done things in committee that unless it's done by the full body as a resolution or ordinance, it means nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if all we're doing is approving them to add this to their policy of the senior citizen center, I mean, I think we could do that in committee if we could approve their decision to do yeah. that but as far as making it enforceable it needs to go to the we need to go to the full body I would think in a form well, of a resolution at least well the they, resolutions, just, they just wanted to go with the first option at least you kind of agree they with just the, what they've sure decided that we're in agreement with them. right do we have a current policy on any other buildings that that? Well, that one's such a unique use. I mean, if it's a community center, there has to be somebody that's part of the group renting it on site at all times because they have to maintain the keys and give the keys back to us. So there is some corollary there with the community center, but the use of the senior citizen center, given the groups involved, it's kind of unique. They don't, they don't have a lot of activities unless they sponsor it. They used to, but they don't anymore because they had the trouble with keeping someone there at all times. And they're having right. more yeah. trips, more off-site yeah. excursions, for lack of a better word, uh, that they're doing, and that's that's what's made this more of a problem than it has been in times past. Doors they're open. gone, no one's there. and okay. plus, you know, they're using this building uh, on a regular basis. Yeah. They try not to schedule things so that they overlap, but sometimes it happens. And I think this is, John, you can correct me, maybe twice a month usually that this has been an issue. It, 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 it's really only coming up in instances where the meals on wheels, meals have to be delivered and there's not enough volunteers to deliver those and then the, the supervisor is leaving to deliver the meals. So it's not, not an everyday occurrence. And it's only stemming from the fact that they can't get enough volunteers for the meals on wheels program. Well, if all that they're asking us for is a an approval of their actions, proposed actions in their policy, I think I think that would be in order to have a motion to to do that. Because uh, yeah. it's going to be an action of their policy. They just don't want to do it until they know we're okay with it. You need a motion to support their actions. Their, this policy decision. I guess the best way to phrase it. That sound good to you, Mayor? Yes, sir. Okay. You may want to make that motion. Anybody comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Whitaker makes a motion. Do I have a second? 
Mr. Buckmaster makes a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion does carry. Thank you. If they require more of us, tell them to bring it back if that doesn't tend to work out and involve them resolve their situation. Yes, sir. I'm sure they'll let us know. Uh, on the Littleton Street property lease agreement that we discussed last meeting. Yes, sir. I spoke to Mr. Hoffman earlier today. Uh, he would rather buy the property than lease it because he feels if you do the lease, then it could be terminated at any time, and then he'd put money in the property and it leaves him having to go back to what he was doing before. Uh, and I did discuss that, and I believe it was in the minutes with Mr. Beller. Uh, Mr. Beller doesn't feel like you can restrict it to the surrounding property owners, but he's in agreement with me. Given the restrictions on the property that you can't really build anything on it because it doesn't meet zoning, he doesn't see why anybody else that doesn't have property that That's abuts right. it right. would purchase the property. But to do it, it has to be a cloud surplus property and then has to go through sealed public bids. It cannot be restricted to specific individuals. If we sell Sealed bids? Yes, sir. Right. It, it, it would go just like uh, the committee for resale land when you're redoing the land we've got for taxes. It has to be advertised they have to submit them in sealed bids and then there's an opening so it's just like a regular bid opening you can't sell it on the courthouse steps like no they have to be they mail in their bids and then you open them all right there and say who's the high bidder i think if only the one has expressed interest in it i'm not so sure that we need to do anything with it but what's your thoughts committee the lawyer says but he thinks we ought to, that we can go ahead and sell it. Yes, sir. If you have to declare it, but you, you have to declare it surplus property, then you go through the procedure just like other surplus property. But it's Mr. Hoffman and Mr. Earps have both expressed interest, though they both would like interest in the part that abuts their property. And Mr. Earps, when he talked to me, he didn't want the whole thing. He just really wanted what was abutting his property. So I think Mr. Hoffman was going to talk to Mr. Earps and see if they can maybe work out an agreement and either go together and purchase it or work out some kind of agreement amongst themselves about that. My discussion with Mr. Hopper was he was going to try to get Mr. Herbs to let him buy it with an agreement that could split whatever it cost. So now my question is if they're the only two that have interest, the only two bounding, and you surplus it and sell it at seal bid, what's the chance they're going to just offer you a dollar for it because they know they're the only ones that are going to bid on it? And does it really matter if they do only pay a dollar? Well, you can. Can we set a minimum bid? On that, I didn't get any discussion with I, I would think you probably could, but that's just price. an initial. It would change the tax appraisal some. I mean, I would imagine property being added to their. If it's course. added to their property, it property. will because they're, they're yeah. land. In the <clears throat> that figure you're saying it wouldn't be added, it might not be added. Actually. Sure. If it did have to be absorbed. So it would have to be absorbed? Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't create it and sell it as a standalone. It's never, it's it's never been paid, paid when the highway that department is, doesn't maintain sure it's it. It's not on the list. Mm -hmm. That's why there's only three no, people that's really. possible. If you go it. back and map's old enough, it's on there, but in more up to date ones, it's not there. There'd be three parties that possibly could buy it the one on the upper side and two on the lower side. The one on the upper side apparently is not interested, and the two on the lower side want to split it. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, want a, you want you need a motion from us on how to, what to do next? You can either make a motion on what you want to do next, or if you would like to get further clarification from the county attorney about any minimum bids or anything that can be required on it. Keep in mind it does fix an issue that we all want fixed. I don't think that it's, it's anything that is benefiting anyone will ever benefit anyone except those property owners. Right. Okay. It's an eyesore, <clears throat> it's an opportunity possibly to clean it up. I would have to say that, you know, it, it makes sense to uh, possibly declare it, go through the sale procedure. Uh, we might want to look into whether or not we can put a minimum bid on it mm -hmm. uh, or not. It may not even be necessary to do that. I, right. you know, but and I, will, I will say, I did speak to Mr. Scruggs, and if you go there and look at it, it's a gravel road. It's never been paved. Right. The highway department has no intention of paving it. It's growing over. The trees are growing over it. They've never been trimmed back. So there is no 
interest in the highway department of taking care of that property and it's been there since I don't know how long so I don't That's see any interest in the county government years. of doing anything with it. It's been there since one of our first mass, me and John looked it up. Yeah. It's been on there, it's just been forgotten about. Does it dead end on itself? I mean, there's no way to access another road through it? Uh, actually, it no, runs in between two road. roads. It runs between Green Top and Fox Hall. Uh, yeah, I usually the other day there were I'm delivering meals on wheels and they had my street blocks, so I just backed up and. Okay. I've driven it before. Yeah, it, it only goes between those two. I mean, there is a paved part that technically is Littleton Street, but that takes you beside the parking lot for the post office and you come out right there next to the, the drop boxes. Mm -hmm. But they're not, obviously they're not interested in that, just that gravel part that's never been maintained. Okay. If you didn't know it was a street, you would just think it's part of their property. Uh, I mean, I think we are hoping those cars get moved, but there's no guarantee that they get moved. Mm -hmm. if he has told me that he will, he will move them and oh, rest a lot of stuff. He has, he has told me that he will move them, and in good faith, I'm going with what he's told me. And the rest of them, he is planning on selling that he can't get back with. So. If I could correct something I said earlier, Mr. Chairman, the third option would be that this committee could pass it, and then when you get up to the county commission, you can bring up these issues again and say, ask questions about if it could be done on a minimum bid or any of that stuff, and then if you don't want to approve it then, you can just, some of them, you don't even have you just if it fails for lack of motion then it dies there. So well you, obviously you've been involved in this process, whole thing and talking with them and all the parties involved. What is your recommendation? We have no intention to ever maintain that property. Uh, Mr. Hoffman did say that some of the youth does like to use that to jump up on the back of his property and he said it has damaged some of the back part of the roof on his property and that's one of the reasons he really wants the property. I would prefer to just go ahead and sell it. But now, who declares a surplus? The whole county, or it has to be the county commission. or have to declare a surplus property. We can just recommend to they do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Buckmaster. I will say, in my opinion, I don't care whether we sell it or not. It's useless to us. I don't care if you get a dollar for it. I'm speculating he's probably not going to move anything on it. But at least if you sell it to him, maybe you get an extra fifteen, twenty dollars a year in property tax, and we don't worry about it anymore. And maybe he does move the cars. It's a win-win for us. It's pure speculation. It's, it has no purpose to us right now. Most people probably didn't even know it belonged to the county. But I would say probably surplus the thing, in my opinion. Sell it like you said we need to. Why don't you make a motion that we declare that we recommend the commission declare a surplus and put it up for sealed bids? What did you do? You just said it all. Because <laughs> okay, motion by Mr. Buckmaster. You need a second? I get it. Second by Coy. Yeah. We have a motion to declare this property surplus and sell it. To recommend it to the commission declare it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a motion by Mr. Buckmaster and a second by Mr. Dickey. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Gould. Yes, sir. While we're addressing that, do we not have county ordinances that would Take care of those cars. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's a whole other ball game. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're working on that as well, and this is a way of kind of going and working that direction. It is. We do and have county ordinances that address that, but if you don't mind spending legal fees and the, as opposed to making a little bit of money, you can go that route. But it's going to cost us money. <laughs> we have uh, Mr. Butler went to trial on three cases in September over two days, and that cost us about seven thousand dollars. I think we should give up, go ahead and get rid of them and get the head of your property government, out of their local government, out of their Was I not of the impression that he was, there may be a gray area there because his property is commercial? There is, there if is. it's not out on the road, there, there's a gray area there. Again, okay. in my opinion, it's not worth fighting over if we can come to an agreement and we get a little bit of money and get rid of a piece of property yeah. we're not maintaining anyway. My problem are the cars that are lined up on Church Street. I can't see to get off that side road has already been two or three wrecks there just because of that and they're sitting on the sidewalk to me that's a bigger issue okay. than what he's got around the old hardware store well this, he, he's we're including some cars 
he has cars parked everywhere. So yeah. he has some of the ones he wants to move. He, yeah. has, he has some in the parking lot, some beside the house, like you're talking about, some in front of the house, and then he, but the ones actually next to his business, I think I don't think he plans on moving those. Some of them, some of them, he's already got plans to sell. Does he? The, uh, the motion did pass. Let's move on. We have other business. Um, we've had an ongoing discussion on the use of courthouse space. Mr. Oliver, you want to update us on yeah, your, uh, your I meant to, conversations I meant to, uh, with Mr. Paxton? Yeah, I meant to, uh, Mr. Paxton and I meant to come up here. We've both been busy. Uh, but uh, he told me that uh, he, he'll, he'll come up with me one day and, and we'll look and he'll make a list of what he needs done. Uh, but he said that the ramp is, is, is actually all right, except it just needs to be a little bit wider. And so he might want to look at what it would take to make it wider as opposed to tearing it down and putting a new one up or building a whole lot new one. And he and I just haven't had a chance to get together. We, okay. we will do that. Okay. Under new business, um, we have a proposed lease agreement with Nick Cumberland um, for one of the buildings, uh, one of the rooms, this room, I think, over here. Mayor, you explain it, please. Yes, sir. Uh, I was contacted by the Mid-Cumberland Community Action Agency. They currently are at a space at the uh, Public Housing Authority on Project Road. It was housing their uh, Head Start program. They have lost the, the grant on that, so another organization has taken that over. So their remaining services that were also on there have to vacate that, that property. And so they were looking for some spaces. They called and asked me if we had anything. Really, the only thing I could come up with would be the old clerk and master's office right here, the first office here when you come in the door on your right. Uh, they, they came and looked at it and they were very happy with it and so they sent me this lease. When I had talked to them about a potential lease, I had gave them the rental amount of $50 a month because we are currently charging mid and Human Resources that for half of the old health department building. So given that they are similar organizations, I quoted them $50 a month. I thought at the time that it was going to be two months. They looked at the property at the building or at the office there. And we took them, showed them the restrooms and everything, and they were very happy with it. And so they asked us if we'd be willing to go longer. And they put in this that uh, I think they want to go to October 31st of 2020. So it'd be roughly a one year lease at $50 a month. Uh, as far as the price, I told them it had to go through the commission and committee that the price may change if it was the will of the commission committee and they understood that. And, but that's why the, the price is $50. I'll explain that to you. But I did send this to Mr. Beller. He has looked at it and he had no problems with the lease. He just uh, reminded me that there is a state statute that said any leases entered into by the county must be approved by the county commission before I can sign off on those. And I told him that's understood. We already set, had it set for this county commitment or the county, excuse me, the, committee meeting tonight to go take a step in that process so I included it in the, the handout tonight if anybody has any questions on those or on that lease agreement yes sir uh, mid coming over here over here under. that's mid coming human resources this is com mid coming community action agency they used to be part of the same organization but mid coming community action agency split off from them okay. and they do the uh, Low income uh, home energy assistance program, weatherization program, a nutrition program, and they were managing the Head Start, and they have a couple of other programs I can't remember off the top of my head. So, but, no, so in other words, they need, don't need a, a bigger space. Did you they don't. They're only going to be in here uh, two days a week, so eight days a month. Okay. Um, it's it strictly an office, or are they going to have Head Start kids? No, they have lost the they have lost the Head Start program. Okay. They will no longer be managing that. Uh, actually, they have to apply for that again, and it, it doesn't get awarded. I think they said until sometime next July, so they have to apply for that again and be awarded it before they would take the Head Start program back over. Right now, it's going to another organization that will be taking that over. So no, there will be no kids in here. It's strictly going to be used for the the low energy home inter, low income home energy assistance program and weatherization. It was the two main programs they told me they'd be uh, meeting with people here and it's two days a month I mean two days a week excuse me so eight days a month I do know the space that they rent uh, from the housing authority uh, that pays just barely south of a thousand dollars a month I, I, I don't think fifty dollars a month is anywhere near what this space should rent for I was just asking what's it going to cost us in energy wise for, yeah. that, for those days I mean literally 
I don't think any bugs will be covered. We're keeping the building heated and cooled anyway. So. Well, yeah. when they lost the Head Start program, they lost eight to ten million dollars in funding, and they've let go of about a hundred staff members, and they are restructuring at this time. So, and given that we were already charging Mid Cumberland Human Resources, who is a similarly situated organization, fifty dollars for a much longer space, much larger space, that they use more days a month. To me, using it eight days a month at fifty dollars to keep them equal, I call them fifty dollars. However, I did let them know if the committee wants to change that, that's the will of the committee. When does that other lease come up? It renews every month. If you all decide you want to take a look at it, I have no objections to that if you want to take a look at it. How long has it been fifty dollars a month? I think since like the early two thousands. I don't remember the exact date. Sometimes you charge these groups not a lot of money because you, that's your kind of like your donations to help them sure. in the community. Mm -hmm. you, you want them in your community. You don't want to drive them out and have them come back and forth and let them do business here. So it's kind of like a, you know, you don't, you don't charge them a lot. You do want to hit the middle. We do. So what's the minimum electric? I don't know. I mean, that's my, we're, we're contemplating spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on this building to try to bring it up to standards. And then we're talking about renting it for $50 a month. I mean, we can probably, if you put a, add the paper to rent office space in the courthouse for $50 a month, you'd have 100 people standing in the front door. I know they're not all, Mid Cumberland agency, but I'm just saying, I have no problem renting it to them at all. I worry about what we have to do to it. Uh, like all renters, you know, what they tell you they want and they're happy with it and then they're in here, you know, I need you to fix this and I need you to fix this and this doesn't work and this doesn't work. So I just, you know, I don't see them moving in like it is and it's not costing us anything, but that's just my past experiences in situations like this. Of course, the office was used until a year or so ago, but now they looked at it and say, oh, we want this painted green. I mean, they didn't say anything. No, they said they liked it the way it was. Really, though, there's a piece of trim that's fallen down that would need to be put back up. I even showed them that it had the elevator access panels in there for any work had to be done in the elevator. They really liked the space. So not a $50 to my big bad, as long as we don't have to do the upkeep. Well, it's, you're only obligating yourself for a year. So. Well, the energy bill right now currently is around two hundred and forty-three dollars a month, and I think the water bill is to the minimum, so forty-three twenty-six. I think is what it is. But <coughs> if you remember, these units have been running the whole time, whether someone's in the building or not, they're running. And so I say we keep we keep the building heated and cool because you don't want your building to deteriorate. To what temperature? Whatever. You never know. Depends on when you walk into the room. And which room you're in. <laughs> what happened if you paid fifty dollars a month and they pay a portion of the electric bill and a portion of the water bill? I mean I don't know how you would ever proportion it. Yeah. They're not gonna have an impact. Have track how many times the flushes come out. I know how you do it. <laughs> the only way I think you would do it is compare it their percentage of square footage they're releasing versus the percentage the entire square footage of the building. Yeah, I still say you want you want it in your county, and it's, and, it's, and you want people in and out of this building. We want people using this building, and you're heating and cooling it anyway. I don't think I don't think fifty dollars a month is, is a bad price. Uh, I mean, it's, there are lights on that are on. There are going to be computers running that aren't. They may have a television going. I don't know. They may plug a little heater in because they're a little cool and it's running. I just don't think fifty dollars a month is enough. But whatever the will of the body is, I don't can agree. I don't believe. It. To be just for the cost that we're going to do on that piece. Now, there is a money in the, in the company as well. I'm not trying to gouge by any means, but we want to cover our cost in that piece as well. What about a hundred dollars a month? I mean, I just pay it twice. I'll go with whatever you guys decide. I think a hundred would be good. I mean, be a, that'd be a fair price for them. You want to make a motion that we suggest to the commission that they approve this lease with the big company for a hundred dollars a month? I do. Okay, motion by Colin. See any other problems with the lease? Any other things that you want changed? 
Are you comfortable with the year? Do you want to cut the time back to six months? Do you want to make it I said we did three ten months years. Of ordering. I, I said we did three months in that one myself and look at it three months down the road to see what that energy cost is showing. See where we are personally. Now the motion right now is we're going to recommend to the commission that they approve the lease as it is, except we up it to a hundred dollars a month. I have that, have that like a motion for Mr. Dickey. Do I have a second? Do I have a second to Mr. Dickey's motion? I'll well, second it. Mr. Oliver seconds the motion. Everybody understand what we're voting on? To let the mayor enter into a lease for $100 a month, if they will do $100 a month, for one year. Yes, Mr. Buckman. I'm going to stand by what I said last month and every month before then. I won't say it again. We moved everybody out of this building for a reason. We've done nothing to this building to constitute moving people back into this building. I do not believe we should move anybody back in this building until it's repaired. And if we're not going to repair it, we should not allow anyone in the building. We spent millions of dollars because people could not habitate this building. If they could do it then, they certainly can't do it now. Well, part of the reason we moved people out was also their lack of space. That was the biggest problem. The building is full of mold. The boiler has problems. Everything has problems. You will not repair them. When we start letting people move in here, we're going to continue to let them move in, and nothing will get fixed until somebody falls through the floor, or we spend millions of taxpayer dollars on a building that maybe people don't want us to spend money on. But I've said we should not allow habitation to this building until it's repaired, and it has not been repaired. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, I agree with Mr. Oliver. We need Mr. Cumberland. We, we don't need them. They help a whole lot of low-income people. I mean, I, I, I've been in there taking people over there, and if 50 bucks is all they can afford, then that's all they need to pay. They help a lot of our people around here, a, a lot of hope. Low income folks, and I, I, I just can't, I just can't see. When they're paying they nine hundred and sixty-four dollars last month, and have been doing that for the last five years, I don't have a problem with them paying a hundred. Well, the nine hundred and sixty-four dollars was the Head Start program, which they lost and lost eight to ten million dollars. But it was this other, as well. Right, the other group will be taking over that lease and they'll be paying the nine, whatever it is, a month. Maybe, maybe not. They may not be there. Well, there's more in, more other empty office space in this county other than this courthouse, too. A lot more. And it ain't no fifty and hundred dollars a month. Uh, again, we spent millions of taxpayer dollars because this was not safe, it wasn't secure. <coughs> I've heard every excuse in the world why we spent those millions of dollars. We could not use this building. If we couldn't use it then, we can't use it now. Anybody else? We have a motion on the floor. I'd like to have a vote by a raised hand. If you're in favor of the motion, which was to lease this at $100 per month for one year to Mitt Cumberland or to authorize the mayor to execute that lease, I guess is the better way. How do you have it stated, Mr. Yeah, we recommend to the commission to approve the lease but up, but up it to $100 a month. Okay. Mr. All in favor, raise your right hand. Keep it up. i got to count. We have three in favor of the motion. All opposed to the motion. We have five opposed to the motion. Motion fails. Do I hear another motion in this matter? Hearing no other motions, we'll move on. Uh, next item under new business is approval send forward to the full commission an ordinance 
for the for address display. This was uh, given to us by Commissioner Buckmaster. Let you explain this, where this, and how this came into being. Please, sir. Here what this is is an ordinance to clarify the display of a house number in a particular position, a particular height. There's a lot of particulars in there so that this can be found by emergency responders. Uh, the preamble actually states that uh, I worked with uh, myself, Chief Beeler, Chief Cawther, and Sheriff Russell, Director Beatty. We've all been across this. If you're not aware, there are many instances when an ambulance or a police officer can't find a house because it has no house number. Not even just a little one, it has no house number anywhere around it. Maybe it's on a mailbox down the street somewhere. The delays vary, I mean, maybe two or three minutes. I actually heard a domestic with a delay of over 20 minutes about six months ago because they couldn't find a house. Uh, if you read through this, this actually was copied from uh, another municipality here in Tennessee, but in, in all honesty, as I told Commissioner Jewell earlier, we stepped way back off of the penalties on this. Uh, basically, the penalties are a fine or fee of not more than $25 determined by the Court of General Sessions. Uh, new construction fees shall be at the discretion of the building and zoning inspector as directed by the Codes Commission. This basically asks for a four inch block house number, three inches if reflective. It asks for it on a post at the driveway entrance or a mailbox if it's at the driveway entrance. And it has to be visible from both directions. That's the gist of it all. Uh, I've heard some kickback on this and I've, I've not actually discussed this but I see this being sort of a team effort. As a member of the fire department, I'll be quite honest with you, I'm the, I'm the one that least cares about this. Uh, there's going to be a big orange glow in the sky if I'm going to it so I can find it without a house number, but I've listened so often to the Sheriff's Department and Ambulance Service and have not been able to find a house simply because it wasn't marked. If you look, a lot of people actually put some little one-inch numbers on their mailbox and then fold the red flag down over it so you can't see it, or maybe they're just on the face of the mailbox half inch or one inch numbers and you'll find that as you respond to these incidences you really don't have time to stop and shine a spotlight at every every front of the mailbox they need to be clearly displayed which is defined in this in this ordinance that I'm asking you uh, to consider uh, I know it's kind of long <coughs> but like I said I I copied it and uh, Chief Cawther and I actually worked on this pretty hard and I don't know whether uh, the sheriff or, or the EMS director have anything to add to this but we have all discussed it at least. <coughs> yeah. It is, it is a major problem. Mr. Dickey. If you get in a real area, how are you going to find a house if you got four or five <coughs> different mailbox on one side? And let you go and put the number on the post. The number belongs on a post at the driveway entrance to that property. What you're going to find is we're even going to group mailbox at some of these subdivisions. Yes. And that's the only place you're going to have a number is on this big mailbox at the end of the road. Now there's going to be 40 houses up there with no number. Mr. I guess my only concern, I, I think it's a great idea personally. My only concern is how available uh, is this marketing system? Is it? Uh, person able to do it? Is this something that can be purchased pretty easily by someone? Sure. It's simply, it doesn't say what post you have to use. And like that. You put a post up, you put a four inch block number on it that you get from the hardware store. Two by four. Yeah. Yeah. Communities uh, utilized a, a special fiberglass reflective sign. You see them in other jurisdictions. This ordinance does not stipulate that that's what it has to be. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. So like Matt said, it could be a two before with a set of numbers on it. Now I will say this uh, to address 
Commissioner Gully. Smith County just last week, two weeks ago, actually sold Post as a fundraiser, I believe, for $30. Uh, and they put them in. And I have mentioned to uh, Mr. Scruggs, I expect this to be a team effort, to be honest with you. This is not something that just Sam is going to do or just the sheriff is going to do or whatever. I expect this to be a team effort. Uh, and Bill seemed to be pretty on board with maybe we get together and the, and the county gets the posts and the numbers or some posts and numbers and, and tell these people, you don't want to do it, buy it from me. And maybe Bill goes out there and buries it. Uh, all I'm looking for here is basically I need the numbers. In some counties, in some counties I've seen the uh, future farmers of America do these posts mm -hmm. and put the numbers on there, whether they pay them on there or put a ball number on there. But mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea too. I have no problem with them. That's the three there. How are we going to distribute, if this passes, how are we going to distribute to everybody and let them know that they have 180 days to do this? I'm sure it'll be on the front page of the paper. Not everybody reads the paper. Right. You send them a letter. My concern and the concern that was voiced in the executive committee when I brought this up the other night was uh, the, the penalties and who's going to enforce it. It doesn't do us any good to pass an ordinance and a law that says people can be fined, but you don't put in here who is enforcing it. And this is not criminal law, so it's not up to the sheriff to enforce this. And the building inspector, your codes inspector, could, could be, but it says in here, strictly on new construction is what he's looking at, which is, you already have that on new construction, and he's enforcing that on new construction. It's in the building codes to do this on new construction, and we make sure that all new construction has this. So this is taking that a step further to try to require people out in the county to do this. The biggest issue I have with it is the enforcement <coughs> issue. If you're going to put fines in here, you've got to put in here who's going to enforce it, and that is what... Um, Mr. Beller, when he looked it over, that was the first thing, his first comments was, you're putting something in here to be enforced and you're not naming who the enforcing Which authority. Which is the problem we have with our ordinance this far, there are cars and grass and the same thing. Exactly. exactly. We say don't do this, but we don't say who is, who is it going to take care of it when they don't. So and, you, um, so that's, that's, that, that's been one question. Right. So you're asking added. That can be added. to added. add the building and zoning inspector to, to all of it. That, I guess that's a possibility. If the body wants to put that off on him, I think he's had enough to take care of now. Here's, here's the thing, and I expected it to be a kind of a team effort as EMS responds to calls. I may be oversimplifying, but I see them having a notebook and writing down, hey, this address is not marked. As a deputy's patrol, not on purpose looking, but it, <laughs> there ain't no, there's no number here. That's how long with Sam. Maybe he develops a form letter that he sends out saying, "Hey, you got, you, where you wear this? You got 180 days to do this in." I'll, I'll tell you this: just in the Lake Creek area that I was out driving today, doing my inspections, if I stopped at every mailbox I saw that didn't have lettering on it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have got anything done today. Uh, that whole area has no leverage. The the very reason that I say this is necessary because no, I, 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 agree with you. I agree with you, but I'm just saying me. And that's a full time job. If it's just me. That's why I said I expected it to be a team effort. I, I honestly think that as the sheriff's deputies are riding around day and night, hey, this house, the problem's going to be as they're riding around say, hey, this house doesn't have a number. What number is it? But that's the problem we're already having in an emergency response. Well, I do like it. it. It needs to be done. There's a need for it. And it's a public safety issue. It needs to be done for the public safety, whether the people realize it or not. Mm -hmm. And I know we've dealt with this with the post office trying to deliver mail mm -hmm. for years. You pull up to a mailbox, there's no numbers on it. They tried to give them out. They would mm -hmm. give them to people. They wouldn't put them on there. They put them on the wrong side. They forget. You know, and one thing we talked about in developing our mitigation plan was the possibility 
of doing numbering or having numbers available for people to come in and pick up so that they could do these things. I don't know if we want to carry it a step further and try to do something like that. I'm certainly not against the idea of it. I'm just against the idea of passing an ordinance that's enforceable without naming the enforcement authority. Mr. D. Could you be able to, if you pass this ordinance, put a, a deadline, a, like July? Well, it's got 180 July, days. Yeah. From the time it's passed, 180 days, that's six months. And then they can put it in the paper? And take You're it. giving people six months to come into compliance before they're ever out of compliance. Well, based on human nature, it's going to give them a longer time than that. I mean, we've gone for how many years without it. I would give them a longer time length, and then as they show up, it's like you're saying, Sam, you don't have time to go around looking for this, but now, but if you're going somewhere and you see, you might say, hey, you know you're supposed to have a number out here. You might remind them. And same thing with, you know, with, with the ambulance service, because Bill's on wheels. I have trouble finding them. If, they, if she's a new person on my route and she gives me a number, I had trouble finding them because they're not numbered. You're right. So it needs to be done. But I would suggest a longer time frame, maybe even two years, because it's going to take a long time to get some people to do it. Like you said, you you could give them you could give them a post and the numbers and a shovel, and it would still take a year to get it done. You give them, you give them six months. If they do it in six months, you write them a warning letter. If they don't do it, then then you find. But who's going to write the letter? That's the whole problem. And Tom and Sam don't have time to do it. If you want to hire an assistant, you go right ahead and do that. But I'm saying give them more time. And just do it gradually, and if sooner or later we'll get them all caught up. I think so. But I think it's a great idea. But then you write them a letter and they ignore the letter. Mm -hmm. So then you're going to take them into court. Mm -hmm. You know what's involved in doing that? Money. Money. A lot of them. Yes. And time. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I'm just saying. Uh, well, you've got some people out there that say, hey, I ain't going to do what you're saying, you know. Well, some of you are just lazy. Some of you are What's the little old lady? You know, I'm, I'm, why, why did I not have numbers in the first place? What's well, the little lady lives there by herself? But I think, I think if you just give yourself longer time, and, 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 and like you say, let the FFA boys offer to do it. Let, let maybe let the Rotary Club take it as a project. Gradually, in a couple of years from now, you have it all done. I just think, I just think six months is too short a time. But I, I'm all for it. Whatever you want to do. Mr. Scott. So what's it hurt if we pass it? So the 180 days. Um, 60% of people do apply and go ahead and go through this ordinance. Uh, as it writ is written right now, there'd be no one really in charge of that piece. We look back at it at where we are at that point, and we readdress it from there. Who needs to apply? You can do that. It's getting to be more of a major problem for us. Our county grows. I've seen people move from some other county across town and pull their mailbox up, the numbers on it, and just stick it right oh, up. Yeah, sure. And still have the numbers on it where they used to live. Mm -hmm. I had one yesterday morning. I was responding to a call of uh, smoke alarms going off. And wasn't sure which house along this road that it was, and so I was moving slow so I could read them because it was about four o'clock in the morning. Uh, and they had their house number on one side of the mailbox, but not the direction that I was traveling from. So I end up going beyond it, turning around, and coming back to find it. Uh, luckily, it wasn't much of an emergency, but uh, still. These numbers are about 59 cents each. If you've got three numbers, you're paying a buck and a half. If you've got four numbers, you're going to be paying about $2 and a half with that. So it's not that it's a big cost to people. And you're talking about giving them the flexibility of, whether they want raised, pretty wrought iron letters or they just want peeling stick letters uh, or numbers, I, I, I don't see a problem one way or the other. I personally say we, we take it now, address it later if we have that issue of, of codes and, and move. On Same. That. I, I think we should adjust the 25 to 50 because that is the code defense fee already. 50. To 50. That's what we charge already. It was originally written at 590 days in jail. Yeah. That's what. So, the, that's what the other. That's so what the other. Is. That's so, how important it is. We have already decided that that is not allowable under state law. Though. So 50 is what we're. What I am already fining people for not doing our ordinance. Um, this says 25. Somebody help me here. Does it say? 
50 something about per day. Each day is a new offense. Yeah, right. so, so the way we've got it written for ordinance right now, it's, it's $50 a day for 30 days. After 30 days, they go to court. So that means by the time they make it to court, they already owe us $59. Or, you know. Yeah, see, I'm not all about It's really not the money I want anyway. I just want people to no. protect themselves. So. And, and this says that at your discretion as well. Because I assume the way it was written, you are already going to be the yeah. one to send the letter. The fees already set at 50, so we'll just change it from 25 to 50. That way I don't have to remember if we keep adding things onto this. This one's 15, this one's 25, this one's 10, just 50. Let me make sure we get that right. We're saying $50 a day. Yes. But Saturday. General Sessions judge has to make that determination. You write separate checks per day for fifty dollars a day, so they're separate. So it's each. You don't charge them fifteen hundred dollars. You charge them. They're gonna write a lot of checks. But you can also go to someone and say, uh, "You want an ordinance against this? Chance. I'm gonna come back next yeah. week. I want you to have this fixed, or I'm gonna okay. charge it." I want to see people do this. I don't want to punish people for not to do it. Again, I, when I was going through this, I actually foresaw the 180 days. And then maybe we'd have to start sending another letter saying, hey, you know what? We gave you 180. Here's another 90. If they don't do it in 90 days, then you say, okay, in, in 30 days, you don't do it. I'm going to have to, to take you to court. That actually gets you to a year. Again, I don't want the money. I don't want to give people the hassle. I just want them to put the number up. And the number's going to help them, but it's also going to help those who are responding to them. I'm not going to say people have died because they didn't have their number on the mailbox while they may have. I'm going to say sooner or later they're going to. They didn't get the mail on will, I know that. Unless they care, it's been delayed for sure. I, yeah. I, I think we can all agree. Same it's time. Time. It's care just, we're, we're arguing the semantics of it. I, I mean, I think it should be fifty dollars a day, and Mr. Oliver thinks that the time should be extended. I can do the fifty dollars a day. I can't argue about the time being extended, but I personally wouldn't be for. I think with my plan, you're already looking at nearly a year before you get a fine. Six months is plenty of time to put three numbers up in your road at the end of your driveway. Like Mr. Noli said, if sixty percent of the people apply with it. It's already a drastic amount. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's, it's, you can't believe you what 60%. Look, if it's 60% in the house, I got 250, I got 270. Guess what's in between? 260. At least I found it. Right now, you might drive five miles and not see a number. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I agree with that. Personally, I'd be, I'd be, I'm not very much for the uh, looking at the enforcement right now. I think, personally, just where I'm at on this piece. We, what I want to see is we get it out in the papers. We want to see it. We want to see it acknowledged that the county has adopted this as a code. My personal view on it is, and hope that we get that piece to that point. We address it six months from now and see what we need to go with those uh, those penalties and fines. So you're saying not have any person five in it or leave it? Not have a penalty in it at that point. Make this motion entirely. This ordinance entirely. I make a motion. I'd even be willing to make a motion say that we put this into order as this ordinance in whatever this number is going to be and let me know penalties at this point re readdress it at 180 days from now now is this our approved to go for the whole commission <coughs> we have to recommend the commission it's, it's, have yeah, to the commission. yeah it's, 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 now it's i think order. we need the penalty the threat of penalty in there now we might not should say this in the time video over here, but if you don't put somebody in charge, the threat of the penalty is there, but there's nobody there to enforce it, like Commissioner Jewell said. Now, it's not entirely eight, correct. Huh? That's not entirely correct. Well, you've got it written for any new construction, there is an enforcer, and it's building. And official. he's doing that. Day, but so for already. existing, so you're going to enforce it on one group, not enforce it on another. See, I assumed that it was written. I, I don't guess I read it close enough. I thought it was for everybody. It says, uh, it says any person, firm, or corporation violating the provision of this ordinance shall be guilty of a civil offense subject to a fine or fee of not more than $25 as determined by the Court of General Sessions, or in the case of new construction, such fee shall be at the discretion of the building and zoning inspector or as directed by the Codes Commission. Where it says, or, that is a separate thing. It's not. So in case of new construction, it's the building and zoning inspector. For existing construction, there is nobody to take it to court. That was that was what 
our objections. So you're going to, at the end of 180 days, you've got an enforcement me mechanism, so you're going after new construction, but you're not going after existing construction. So you're treating two different sets of people differently. Mm -hmm. So how do you enforce the new construction? How do you get your clients together? Do you still have to go to general session? No, I, I sent them a letter in the mail for $50 a day stating that this can continue for 30 days. And normally they comply. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they'll be like the one that we have in court right now. So the court will have to give them a court order to comply, and then they still have to pay the $1,500. This actually says not more than $25, not more than $25 a day. But he's saying that in the up, uh, he's saying to raise it for, to 50 so it's easier for him to remember. Yeah, it doesn't say correct. Well, 50, 50 is whatever something else is. So we already have a chart on it. The county's already passed a chart for fees, so, and it's 50. So, so take out that part that starts with the or and go down to the comma after inspector. So the penalties is where we're at right now? That's the biggest thing. So if we put... All I was saying was I wasn't worried about the penalties. I was hoping we'd get out there. Mm -hmm. the person. The oh, well, that's me. Like always do. What I'm so liking is... Facebook what I'm liking is at the discretion of. Now, at the discretion of, in your opinion, is what? I gave you 180 days. It's all with them. I'm fine, you know. Or... I will go by exactly what the letter says. I don't deviate, I don't add to or make an assumption. If it says 180 days, that's it. So if a man says I couldn't do it because it's rained for 30 days and it's too muddy he and will I can't get, get He my... will get a letter in the mail and I always give people a time limit. The county gives you 10 days to comply. So, so after if you're 180 discussing... days, he will get 10 days more. And after 10 days, he will get a $50 fine. Okay, I have a suggestion. And that's not my opinion. That's based off county rules. Okay. okay, I have a suggestion. What will work, based on what we've expressed, is we recommend to the commission that they pass this, the change it to fifty dollars a day, so it's consistent with that, mm -hmm. but not do any, but not, but reassess it in six months to see how many people are complying, as to whether we need to extend it to. That won't be any reassess in six months. Okay. No, what I'm thinking is that what will happen is that, that somebody else bit by bit, and people will start to start to, to do it, and and like like Matt, if he's doing an ambulance thing, he may say, you know, you don't have your number here, you need to be fined for that, and he'll suggest it, and then the sheriff may say, you know, you don't have a number here, you know, you have to have that, you know, or we might say to our neighbor, you know, you know, I just put my number See, up, you don't what have I'm hoping that's for. what you're hoping for, yeah. And so in six months, we can reassess whether we need to actually start enforcing it and throwing extra work on you or not. Right now you're, you're handling new construction. I think we've got too many questions, too much discussion. Our county attorney's not here. He did look at it. He had concerns about the enforcement part of it. I don't think we should do anything on this tonight until we hash out and work out these, these issues and that he's perfectly happy with what we're talking about now. I know it still has to go to the full body, but I think we we have too many issues on it to try to rule on it tonight. Do you agree me to hash it out? Somebody does and bring it back something that everybody can somewhat agree to. Well, can and I think, the can you think, if you think we're arguing about it, wait till you get to hunt for 20 more people. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we postpone it and make a county uh, attorney take a look at it and give us the information. Another look at it and make it more enforceable. It's just. We have a motion to not take any action on it tonight. Yep. Do have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Gulley. All in favor, say aye. 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 Will any other business come before the committee tonight? Who, uh, That's who, all who, I have. Who is the second? Mr. Gulley. Any other business? And if y'all would, if you have any suggestions on this, my email is on the website. Email it to me. Let me try and fix it to, to suit everybody. Well, I, this was handed to me, what, last Monday? Yeah. And it's been hard to try to delve into it and to talk to all the parties, but I did try to get with them. Well, I said, I don't want the money, I want the numbers. And I think we're all, that are all. But I think it's going to take the money to get the numbers. I agree. And when you put that in there, you got in for it. Now, I can't tell you this, where my parents live at, 
it was so hard to get people to do it. The county actually did it for them and added a hundred dollars on their tax bill the next year. They didn't have a choice. Who did that? Michigan. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. All in favor, get up and leave. Adjourn. Yeah, you know the way. We will take five minutes and start our law enforcement committee meeting. Just a little bit late. Everybody, quick, go to the bathroom.